Welcome to Teaching Training Session 2020, organized by Sección de Idiomas de la Facultad de Humanidades USAC, Embajada de los Estados Unidos en Guatemala, en Asociación de Jóvenes Expecarios del Departamento de Estado AGEDE. My name is Eduardo Miranda, and I'll be hosting this conference. Thank you so much for being with us. Before starting, there are some general instructions that you need to follow. We will have 10 minutes for questions and answers at the end of the conference, in which I will be reading questions and comments you post directly in the live chat. Don't forget to subscribe to both of our channels, Idiomas USAC and TTS conferences, so you can stay tuned on all the conferences we will have during the week. Again, thank you for joining us on this conference, Classroom Management in Times of Adversity, a Technological Approach in Charge of PEM, Marcel Taylor whom we warmly welcome in the name of the Organizing Commission of TTS 2020. Marcel Taylor has been working as a teacher for over 10 years, and at the present time, she's a teacher of training of EGAS academic unit. She's currently in the process of culminating her professorado in idioma ingles at Universidad de San Carlos de Guatemala, and a diplomado in psychopedagogia from Universidad de San Carlos she already has. She also holds a TTC certificate from IGA. Throughout the years, Marcel has worked for different programs, such as external programs, IGA school children, and other English courses. Marcel has participated in different academic areas, such as editorial review, curriculum design, and teacher development in Guatemala. So, Marcel, the time is all yours. Thank you so very much, Eduardo, for the presentation. Um, well, to get started, I want to go ahead and share with you um, my screen. And let me just check and see here. Um, Eduardo, can you please just um, help me with the screen function? It's not um, available, thanks. Um, so, I'm, I want to let you know that I'm, uh, I have different roles as such as all of you might have different roles at this moment. And I know that it's compli complicated. Um, some things cannot uh, go as we planned. And this pandemic has come to change a whole lot of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen at this moment. So I wanna let you know that I am also, well, my name is Marcel Taylor. And of course I am a mom. Uh, I'm a mom of three boys. Um, I'm a daughter, I'm a wife, I am a teacher. I'm, uh, like I said it before, a proud mom of three boys. And uh, that has recently become a teacher trainer at EGA. So I understand what you're going through. I understand that this version of giving classes online may be difficult, but also it is something very rewarding and that we can go ahead and achieve so much within it. So without further ado, we're going to start with the session for today and it's classroom management in times of adversity, a technological approach. Now, I'm gonna give you like an agenda. I hope you can see this agenda here. Um, here we have the, the introduction. Okay, so the first thing that I want you guys to know is to like activate prior knowledge in checking what is classroom management and how can we adapt it to our virtual classes? That would be the second part of our session. The third part of our session would be approaching some technological uh, platforms such as Edmodo and ClassDojo that can give you that benefit of how to make your classes a little bit more interactive and also um, help your students. Remember that it's not only the teachers that are struggling at this time, but also students are struggling as well. And uh, also we have uh, the technological tools that I would wish to share with you. These have been uh, very life-changing and I think that they are very uh, useful tools that can make your classes a little bit more interactive. 
So before we start, I want you guys to check on this video and um, I want you to tell me, comment, please, uh, what do you think about the, the video? Do you relate to the video? What are your feelings about it? Okay, and just comment in um, while you're seeing the video. Can you please tell me if you can see my screen? I think we're having a little bit of difficulties. Give me one second while I check this out. I think you're not seeing the video as I am seeing it. So give me one second, okay? two to three weeks. I felt like I was basically on call all the time because I was trying to check my email, even in the evenings, um, because that a lot of times that's what I had to do to work. What does your new teaching schedule look like? Three days a week, I'm on the Especially for 
Okay, I think we had a little bit of difficulties. As always, technology gives us a little bit of up and, ups and downs, but um, that's not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, share with um, with Eduardo. He's going to send you the link of the video if you would like to watch it again. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and project it here. Give me just one second while I copy this link. I'm going to share the link right now with Eduardo at this moment. Okay, so sorry for the setback. And well, like I tell my teachers when I'm giving feedback, this is all a process of learning. So we're learning together. I already shared the link with Eduardo so he can go ahead and project it for you guys. Um, and you can see it in a later time. But the video is demonstrating the life uh, of a teacher. So and um, in this case, I want you to try to go ahead and um, link the information, if you can, um, to how is your experience as a teacher? What do you experience as a teacher? Okay. And um, let me know. Go ahead and write on the comments the, the information that you have, please. And I'm going to read them for you. So at this moment, I'm going to check on the comments. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to project the link also in here so that way you can check it. All right. I have that information available. All right. So um, in this case, I hope everything else goes well, <laughs> you know. So I'm going to go ahead and start projecting the presentation. So we're going to start with the presentation as we have spoken about. And I want to start with this. I think that this is a very recognized phrase nowadays because it's something that has been taken from Dr. Seuss and adapted to what we are living and going through these days. So I wanna read it to you. And it says, I will teach you in a room. I will teach you now in Zoom. 
I will teach you in a house. I will teach you with a mouse. I will teach you here and there. I will teach you because I care. And like I indicated, this is an adaptation from Dr. Seuss. He is one of my favorite um, children uh, editors and writers since I was a kid. I, I, I don't want to give out my age, so I'm not going to say it. Uh, in this case, what is classroom management? Okay, so I want you guys to, let's brainstorm. Let's go ahead and make a brainstorm of what are the things that you find in one word that can go ahead and, and indicate what is classroom management. So I'm gonna be checking on the chat. Can you please uh, let me know your comments? So let's brainstorm what is classroom management. Okay, so I see that you have respect to set, okay, to organize, discipline, excellent. I, I love all of these responses, be organized, control. Okay, Beatriz Perdomo says, a good environment inside the classroom, great. David Aguilar, you're saying, Teaching uh, for me is an amazing experience. Yes, it is an amazing experience, of course. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. Uh, Evelyn Roca, classroom management is the ability to teach students using the tools available. This is an interesting, very, very interesting point. Yes, definitely, Evelyn. Patience, <laughs> yeah, definitely, okay. All of these um, answers are very good. I love the way that you're participating. Andrea, organization and control, uh, positive and comfortable, so learning can take place, very good. Yes, definitely. Graciela Mendizabal, how to maintain organization in your class, good. All right, so thank you so much for your participation. And yes, like I was saying, there is no incorrect or correct answer. Um, classroom management in this case is basically that. All of the things that you said there, control to take advantage of the time, to organize, to have students engaged and everything, it is part of classroom management. But I'm going to show you um, some information about classroom management itself, okay? So in this case, when we're talking about classroom management, what we need to define, okay, are routines. And it is something very important for a student to have within the classroom. When we go into a classroom, what do we do first? We greet the child, we write down in the class um, or the board or uh, the chalkboard or whatever board you're using. If it's an intelligent board, you write down the date, you go ahead and you greet the children, you ask them about their day, how it was. If you're coming back from the weekend, you ask them how their weekend was. So you establish a routine and students are able to actually feel, okay, the teacher's paying attention to me, right? And that is what we have to do, establish a routine. Now, do nows. The do nows are referring to, in this case, warm ups or getting them to focus, okay? So we are using games, we're using warm-ups, we can go ahead and put a sentence, we can uh, throw a ball, whatever you think of, so the students can go ahead and say, yes, we're in this English class, for example, or in any class. It doesn't matter if it's math or science or English. Any class, we do need to do a warm-up, and this is also establishing a routine. Now, the second part would be Tight transitions. When I'm talking about tight transitions, we're talking about uh, words or instructions that are very small, short, but that are concise and that students 
get immediately. So for example, if you have in the information, um, today is Wednesday, but Wednesday is reading day. So we can go ahead and establish a small phrase that says, okay guys, reading time. And what do kids do? Well, they go ahead and take out their reading book and they start reading. Or a color coding. For example, there are some books that I've seen uh, within um, this time, my, my kids' books, they have color codes and they have, they're big books like this, but they have different pages that are um, transitioning from spelling and then they go to reading and then they go to some other things, other topics. And uh, teachers, what they do is that they go ahead and ask them, okay guys, so remember, what is this color? They're activating prior knowledge on colors and then they give them the page number and students immediately respond to that. So having very specific instructions for them to do something in a fast way is very important when we're talking about classroom management. Seating signals. When we enter a classroom and they're disruptive, uh, what is the first thing that we do? Sometimes we go ahead and clap. So for example, bum, ba -da -dum, bum, and you replicate the sound. Bum, bum. Uh, that makes the students say, okay, the teacher's here. Another thing would be, for example, raising their hand or, uh, well, sometimes when we need to, pay, to have their attention back because they're doing an activity and then we need them to come back, we raise our hand, we count two, three, we do signals with our hands without speaking and then students are drawn back into the classroom. Um, another thing about this would be nonverbal intervention. And this is very funny because I remember that I, last year I had some um, Secretarial students and they, most of the time, um, I know that shorthand is very demanding. So they would go into the classroom and English was like a relaxing kind of class for them, but they would, I would be explaining a topic and what they had on their, on the desk would be a book with, um, shorthand exercises. So what I would do for them not to feel embarrassed or anything, I would just walk to them, stay beside them and just tap on their notebook or tap them on their shoulder. And they would immediately, immediately just take out what they take it off, put what they had to do on the desk. So this is nonverbal intervention. Props, well, when I'm talking about props, we need to remember that it is important, very, very important for you to be able to um, praise your students for giving the correct answer, for helping a fellow classmates, um, praising them and giving them rewards and actually telling them good job makes a whole difference. Uh, this is something that Grisi said on her lesson yesterday Kids do not learn from people they don't like. And this is something that is very true. So once you establish that connection, learning for them is going to be easier and having control over your class is going to be much easier, okay? Now, positive group correction. In this case, when they're doing group work, we do not want to intervene as much. We want to be facilitators. And this is something that we have to keep in mind. Uh, so what we want them to do is for them to have roles. And this is where roles come in handy. All of them, if they're doing a group work um, in four, okay, four people, you have establishing roles and this helps them get their mindset, okay, I know that I have to take control of the time, I know that I have to do this, and they help each other out. And also they're correcting themselves without the help of the teacher. So this is something very, very important for classroom management. And another thing would be uh, do it again. So for example, you're walking around in the classroom and you see that all of the students are actually making the same mistake. Okay, so probably something's not clear. What we're going to do is, okay, you, address the classroom completely. Guys, I've noticed that this is a mistake that you're doing at this moment and let's try to address it. Remember that we did this and you try to uh, make it into a way so that not all of the students may have the same problem, but uh, many of them do and you don't want to call them out 
and tell them, no, you're wrong, but you want to go ahead and have the whole class pay attention so that way they can go ahead and self-correct and do it again, okay? So this is something that's very important. Um, in this case, according to a glossary, uh, classroom management refers to the wide variety of skills and techniques that teacher use to keep students organized, orderly, focused, attentive, on task, and academically productive during class, okay? So all of the things that you mentioned in your, um, in the chat, it's basically this. This is the, like the cherry on top. When classroom management strategies are executed effectively, teachers minimize the behavior that impede learning for both individual students and group of students, while maximizing the behavior that facilitates enhancing learning. So once we take control over our classroom, it is very important to acknowledge that once we do this, our classes are going to be much easier. And it's, it's all about classroom management. It's all about focusing the attention of the student to something that they like and doing things in a different way. Now, how can we adapt this to our virtual classes? So is this possible? I've seen so many of uh, teachers trying and struggling over this. How can I go ahead and get my students' attention? Most of them, what they do is they have their cameras off so you cannot see anything and you don't actually know if the student is there. So things that we can go ahead and do, can we go ahead and take what we did in the classroom and bring it into our virtual classes? I'm gonna give you some tips on this. And I think it is possible. What do you think? Go ahead and comment. Do you think that it's kind of be adopted? I wanna hear, I wanna see your comments. Tell me what you think. Okay. Sending them prize cards, yes. Okay, guys, so can you please answer like the question? Do you think that it can be adopted, our classroom management strategies and um, methods that we used inside of normal class? Can we adapt it to our virtual classes? Yes, okay. I have some yeses. All right, I wanna hear from you. I wanna, well, not hear from you, but read you. Um, tell me, how can you think that we can adapt this? What are some things that you do in your class that help you manage your class in, in a virtual way? Adapted it to kinder students. Okay, that's great. Ana Karina. All right, yes, of course. Everything can be adapted. Okay, class dojo. Ah, you talk, you mentioned something that is going to be coming up in a little bit, Graciela. Okay. Yes. Yes, it could be adopted. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the tips, okay? And I want you to take a look at this image. We have gone and we have become different teachers in a very little time period. We have transcended, we have adapted, and we are going through a period of time where change is leading us to different things. And we are making a difference in several lives. So. The picture here is you, you as a teacher. You're going from something that you didn't know, that you didn't have um, the tools. Some of you are, were struggling before, but now you have excelled and exceeded and you are doing things in a different way and your students are motivated and your students are there and they are paying attention. And I know it has been hard, but everything that is hard at the end, it's very rewarding. So which traditional classroom management strategies and approaches can you apply in your virtual classes? Um, 
what do you think? So I had here some uh, class dojo. Let's see. Yes, Marta, I understand that it is hard. Students are not interested in class. I understand that. But here are some things that you're going to find very interesting and probably this is going to help you um, give that little bit of edge for your students to be interested in your class. So let's see. Yes, we can do it. How can we make that transition? Okay, so here's an interesting part. We were talking about establishing rules. We were talking about uh, do nows and tight transitions and seating sing uh, set signals and props. And miraculously, the same thing can happen in a virtual class. So here are some tips. Tip number one, set rules. Even if we are not there, students need to know that we, the teachers, are under control. So in this case, setting your rules and expectations ahead of time, being friendly but firm, really goes a long way. Setting up rules, for example, having everybody turn off their mic at the beginning of the class, giving um, little uh, emojis that they can use in order for them to uh, ask for permission or ask for a question or answer a question, things like that, okay? And be friendly, but also be firm, okay? Number two, establish a routine. As we have already been doing in regular classes, establishing a routine, putting the date, um, asking how their day was, greeting your students. This is something that should continue within your classes, not just go into the class. Okay, just open your book and come here and no. You have to continue to build rapport and routines with your students, be confident and positive with all of the aspects that you do. And definitely here, I would add also have your plans ready. Even if it's a virtual class, you need to have your plans ready. Deal with discipline issues and in virtual classroom immediately uh, without any exceptions. So for this case, I have seen that some students, what they do is that they use the chats to send memes and or uh, send messages to their friends. Hi, how are you? Things like that. So immediately go ahead and just let them know. Guys, this is not right. I'm sorry, um, Pedrito. You're sending memes. I recommend and I uh, remind you that this chat is only for class purposes. If you have a question regarding the class, go ahead and use the chat. But if not, please avoid using memes in a nice, friendly, but firm way. Okay? So it is linked. Tip number one to tip number two, three is very linked. Now we have uh, tip number four, including everyone. Tip number four may be a little bit harder, but we want to encourage students to participate and not just be the student that stays silent and just, you think that maybe he's getting it, but his mind is somewhere else. So we want to avoid that and um, we want to continue to encourage them. So after this information, I'm gonna give you some tools that can go ahead and help you build this with your students within your classrooms with whatever platform that you may be using, okay? And praise your students. As you can see, five of the tips that we had previously seen are still applicable when we are doing virtual management, okay? Now I'm going to give you uh, some time. I'm gonna go ahead and share this video. Let me just finish sharing this one here. And I'm going to share the video, Let's see if I can open it for a second. Okay. So I'm gonna open it right now for you. We're gonna try it in a different way 
and hopefully this one works and you're able to listen to it, okay? Um, Okay. touch is more important than high tech. When a student is in crisis or a student wants to brainstorm an idea and when they need a question answered, I want to be efficient. And one of the best ways of doing that is using the telephone. And so that's a real high touch way that has been really effective for me. And I had really avoided it for a long time because I thought, no, that's really not the technology of online education, but everything is the technology of online education. Establish social presence using digital storytelling. When you start in a face-to-face -face classroom, when that professor comes in, you're looking at their clothes, the way they act, the jokes, the stories, all these things. You size up who they are, right? So for me, one of the things I leveraged or I relied on was the power of storytelling. And so the power of storytelling, you know, telling stories is a great way to establish your presence and to help students get to know each other as real people. Use technology intentionally. I think we get so excited, I know I do, about new tools and, and new digital communities and social media tools and technologies that we can use to really enhance what we're trying to achieve with students in our courses. Uh, but we sometimes let the tool sort of drive our decision making as opposed to going back to our learning objectives and saying, what do we really want to achieve? Does the tool help us achieve that? Just because we get really excited. The power of external resources. There's tons of resources out there that if you just take the time to look, it's amazing what you can use to supplement your online courses. And so you don't have to do all the work yourself. It doesn't always have to be contained in the LMS or in the textbook. And hopefully through that also help encourage and teach your students that there's great resources out there if you just spend the time. Make your expectations explicit being explicit in your directions, in your expectations, um, in everything that you are trying to achieve with students, that so often we keep that secret, we keep that hidden as faculty. Uh, we know what it is. Sometimes we don't even know that we're keeping it hidden. Make it really easy for students to find out what is it they have to do that week, when does it do, how, what are the points, what's at work, those types of things fun and playfulness and the unexpected. Doing something that's different um, can really jolt them and re-energize them and re-engage them in a way that allows them to express themselves creatively. So that it's not just writing an essay, but let's write a screenplay that demonstrates your understanding of these concepts. So anything that adds a little playfulness, I think just re-engages people and makes the online experience not feel so cookie cutter to log in regularly. You probably should plan at least five days a week to be logging in your course. Now that doesn't mean you have to log in, you know, all day, five days a week, right? Sometimes people, I think, misconstrue that and, and will say things like, well, online learning is just so much more work than face-to-face. -face. I don't necessarily buy that, but it's very distributed. The faculty that I know that are the most successful in my own experience has been, they log in regularly to their courses. The power of personal feedback. One of the things that I find that students really value and that they take away from is when they get specific individual feedback that's meaningful. And by not just giving feedback, but giving audio video feedback, I've had students come back to me and really comment on how it was very meaningful to hear that even the inflection in my voice and, and that they could actually walk away with the positive comments. Whereas a lot of times when you just type stuff out, they just say the negative just kind of comes through, right? So I think this is something that we can go ahead and continue to see because um, as you see the points that we have already uh, 
mentioned before in the presentation, uh, these points have a similarity with the things that the video was mentioning at the time. So it is very important, as you can see, we have to establish rules, we have to uh, remember what is our main objective of the classroom. It's not only about technology and trying to use as many uh, technology tools that we have available, but choose the ones that are going to help our students and help them go into the, the phase of, uh, of learning. So this is what we want to achieve. And here is where I'm going to like shift a little bit in showing you some tools that can go ahead and help you make the classes a little bit easier for you, a little bit more engaging for your students and also help you in your classroom management skills, okay? What did you think about the video? What, do you agree with the, what the video indicated? Do you agree with the tips that we presented at this moment? Let me see your comments. Individual feedback, super important. Yes, Graciela. Let's see. TikTok, some, yeah, sometimes it's not that viable. I've heard some terrible things too. Let's see. Sure, we can go ahead and share the link of the video. I'm gonna send it right now to Eduardo so he can share it to, uh, for you guys. You agree? Okay, Abby, yes, I agree. Great video, yes. Definitely, I think this is something that um, we're all trying to work towards. Totally agree, perfect. Okay, so most of you do agree with this being very important for our students. Now, can you adapt the traditional into the virtual? We're going to go ahead and I'm gonna ask you to, if you have a paper uh, there available, if you have your, um, your chat available, just go ahead and write down the things that you see from the left side of the screen. You're going to find a list of all the things that we mentioned as a traditional, um, a, a, a traditional way of um, monitoring our classes, right? And check and see which of those can be adapted into our virtual classes. And I want you to go ahead and type on the chat, which of those can be transitioned to our virtual classes. So we have, these are the ones, the list that you have here for the traditional classes, okay? And I'm going to, I want you to go ahead and type down in the chat, which ones would you consider are important for our virtual classes as well, okay? So I wrote down initially, enter a routine. I think that having a routine is super important. So I wanna hear your insights. Please go ahead and I'm checking the chat right now. Please let me know what other ones do you think are possible to adapt and to transition into our virtual classrooms. Let's see. Entry routine, yes. Group correction, props, very good. Ana Karina Guerra. Do nows, definitely. Positive group correction, yes. It is possible. It is possible to have positive group correction because you can actually go ahead and do group sessions in your virtual classrooms. If you are using Zoom, you can use the breakout rooms. And this is something that I'm gonna go ahead and show you in a little bit, okay? Let's see. Okay, equal participation, yes. Props, positive group correction, do nows. So most of them we can go ahead and do. Do you think that nonverbal intervention is something that we can go ahead and transcend to our virtual classroom? Two nows. The props. Okay, so Dulce, well, when we were talking about props, these are um, 
reinforcements, positive reinforcement for your students. So in this case, props are mentioning or they, um, they are linked to giving them praises, letting them know that they're doing a good job, reinforcing positive behavior. So that's really good. You're doing it great. Oh, I love that drawing. If the kids are drawing or something, um, I think that you're doing wonderful. Great job on your essays, guys. You had really, really um, good imagination for your essays. Something like that. Give them positive reinforcement. That is what we're talking about with props. I hope I answered your question. Okay. So I'm going to transition now, and this is where it's gonna be a little bit more tricky. And I'm gonna show you some things that I use and how to use them, okay? So we're talking about Edmodo. I know that some of you, most of you maybe know the function of Edmodo, but right now Edmodo is transitioning as well as us and, and doing things different and adapting to the needs of the teacher at the moment, okay? So I'm gonna share with you uh, what is Edmodo, okay? So I want you to read the information here. I'm gonna read it with you guys. Uh, take a time to read it as well. So it says Edmodo is an educational technology company offering communication, collaboration, and coaching platforms to K-12 schools and teachers. The Edmodo network enables teachers to share content, distribute quizzes, assignments, and manage communication with students, colleagues, and parents. So this is a tool that has integrated family, teaching, and colleagues as well, okay? So I think that this tool is very important, and I'm gonna go ahead and just stop sharing my screen for a moment because I'm going to share with you, my Edmodo, because I want to show you the things, the beautiful things that you can do in Edmodo, okay? So once you have your Edmodo available, this is how it looks at the beginning, okay? And can you see my screen? Please let me know if you can see my screen. There we go, okay. So here we have, this is my my Edmodo, and this is the classes that I, I was giving before. Um, so we have here information, and this is how I used to do my classes. And I also have my different tutorings when I had a tutorings before. But if you want to create a class, the first thing that you have to do is you're gonna go to my classes. And here you can go ahead and create a classroom. So what you're going to do is you're going to, let's say I'm gonna go ahead and write, um, TTS 2020, okay? And amazing. You can go ahead and describe your class, okay? With uh, 250 words, I think that you can go ahead and describe what your class is about. And uh, I only use a word, but th this is because of time, okay? And you can choose what type of education you are giving, if it's for first, second, third, 11th, 12th grade, superior education or adults. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it like this. And then you have what type of lesson or what type of class is it? Um, here we do not have English per se, but we can go ahead and put it under um, Idiomas del Mundo, okay? And we can go ahead and I think we don't have English here. here because it's referring to different, uh, uh, different idioms, but we can go ahead and choose one of, this is just for purposes. So that way you can see how we can read a class, okay? So you create the class, and now that your class has been created, you can go ahead and add your students. Now there are two ways of adding your students, okay? You can go ahead and add them manually, or you can send them an invite, okay? And by sending them an invite, you go ahead, if you go to your classroom, the only thing that you need to do is give them the code. So it gives you a code that you can go ahead and copy and send it. To, if you have a WhatsApp group with your students, you send it through there, they go ahead and enter 
um, they make their, their Edmodo page, but they have to create it as a student, not as a teacher. Um, with you, if you want to create your Edmodo, you have to be sure that you have um, an email, an institutional email, because if you have your regular email, I think it would not let you use the Edmodo, okay? So once you have that, you send them the link, you have your class, and you're ready to create information with them. So I'm gonna go a little bit fast here, but if you have any comments or do you have any questions, feel free to write to my email. I'm gonna give you that information at the end of the, of the session, okay? And so we can go ahead and chat or make a Zoom session and I would gladly help you out, okay? So in the initial statements, we have our classes. So I'm gonna to go to TTS 2020 and we can go ahead and make a check to see how your students are doing. And you can ask them, how are you doing? Or you can create, um, like a small little question box of things that you want to know. Or you can go ahead and create uh, a question here and start a discussion. Now, this is something that is very useful because it functions a little bit like uh, Facebook, but it has educational purposes. So that is something that you can do. Also, something that you can do with Edmodo is that if you want to do tests, you can go ahead and create them, uh, create new tests here, or you can assign tests that you have already created. You can assign them to different groups. And um, by creating them, you can go ahead and put a, a link, you can put a test, a new one, a document, uh, an Excel, a presentation, you can go ahead and upload this into your library and you have it there, it's stored, it, also has like a function like uh, Google Drive, but in an orderly way, an orderly fashion. And let's go here into my class of 2020. You can create assignments, either new, or you can create assignments and make them out of the blue and you have different ways to create them. So if you want to create an assignment, for example, uh, that is already there, you can choose one of these, or if you want to create a new one, in this case, a new one, it gives you options. So you put the title, you put the instructions, after you put the instructions, you go ahead and create, and it gives you options of what you want to create, okay? If it's an assignment of doing a video, if it's an assignment of, of making an essay, you put the instructions here, you can go ahead and send them a link if you want them to see something first or um, a document, okay? So it's very easy to use. Also something that is new in uh, Edmodo, you can create quizzes, new or existing. And here it looks, yes, it looks like Google Forms, exactly. Yeah. Now we have an additional thing that we have, well, that Edmodo has incorporated for um, our lives to be a little bit easier in creating activities. So it's a jumpstart activity. And this here, it, it's inclined for you to make activities that are interactive. So the good thing about this is that you can go ahead and choose one that is already done, okay? You can look for activities that, um, activity generators or public activities, okay? Or shared activities. It gives you also information here. He, he helps you through the process. So it's like a guide. Um, I'm going to choose one of these, let's say, okay, so, file activities. Let's say that I want to edit this information, but as you can see, he has 10 questions here and it gives you multiple choice and it, it has uh, different other options instead of only multiple choice that you can choose from, okay, you can edit. And let's say that we want to show or we want to share this with our students. What we do is we save or we like, so it's like a Facebook, okay? 
we can go ahead and invite or export. We can also share the link, okay? We give the information and it appears automatically into your um, Edmodo page. So if we share it, it's going to tell us where do we wanna share it? And I wanna share it in TTS 2020. And I'm going to put, please complete the test, okay? I'm just going to write different words here. And then it is shareable. And you already shared it in your screen. You go back and if you can see in my 2020 TTS, you have it already shared. Um, so this activity is already up and running for you to go ahead and do. And it appears for all students to see. And it's interactive. You can do it in the classroom while they're um, in the classroom, or you can leave it as homework, whatever you decide, okay? So this is uh, like something very nice about it more. And also you can see the progress of your students. So here I have different uh, stages that I have with my students. And um, here you see the progress that they have been doing with all of the things that I've left them, okay? And you have this. If you want to create another unit, you just go ahead and add another unit. You create an assignment and it automatically appears within the assignment of the third unit. And that's all you have to do, okay? So. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a little bit about Class Dojo. Now, before we go ahead and continue with Class Dojo, um, I want to just be very specific about Edmodo because Edmodo is a tool that can go ahead and help you, like the video said, giving the students ahead of time the awareness of the tools, of the things, of the points that they have to do. So this is a tool that they can use as Facebook, as a, as a, well, like for example, WhatsApp, but it's a little bit easier for them. They interact in a different way. They know that they have rules that they have to follow and they have everything there. So there is no missing, uh, oh, I didn't know teacher. You said it in the classroom, but I forgot. No, they have it there. It's there already. You just go ahead and tell them, remember guys that you have homework in uh, Edmodo. Check your Edmodo every single day. And they know it's there. So there's not gonna be a, a student that's gonna tell you, I didn't know teacher, I didn't have access or something like that. Some of them are, good, are gonna tell you, my dog ate my paper. And you know, it's not true because now they don't have papers to do, but um, these are exceptions, okay? But this is a, a tool that can go ahead and help you create that information. Now, let's go to Class Dojo. And in Class Dojo, uh, we have this. I want you to take a look at the information of Class Dojo. So it says Class Dojo is an online behavioral management system intended to foster positive student behavior and classroom culture. I know that some of you have already done um, or used this, this platform, and I think it's a beautiful platform that not only um, sixth graders, fifth graders, or um, teen preteens can enjoy, but also teenagers. I remember that last year I used it a lot with my peritos and secretariados, and they loved it. They really, really enjoyed, oh, teacher, we're going to have points or we're not going to have points. Come on, give us some points. So it's something that gets their attention and that's what we want in our classroom. Um, here it says that students earn dojo points based on their classroom conduct. Teachers use class dojo to keep parents up to date on students' progress and classroom ha um, happiness. happiness. Um, class, class dojo is completely free for all users. Okay. So this is an application also that you can ask your students to download, but it's not necessary, or you can just use them in your classroom just to help you manage your class, okay? So I'm gonna share with you right now a little bit of Class Dojo so you can see. Let's see. 
All right, so in Class Dojo, can you see the Class Dojo a screen, guys? Please let me know. Can you see it? Are you able to see the, the class audio? Yes, okay. All right, so here we have a group of students. So this is a group that I made because I was giving a conference in early January and I have some uh, teachers here. Um, so what you do is that you want to add, for example, if you want to go ahead and make a class, okay? You can add a student. You can go to the classroom or class history options, you want to edit the class, and you want to add a student. So let's say that I'm going to add um, Mercy. So I'm going to add Mercy. And I'm going to add her last name. Okay. And we click on Mercy Reese. We save and she has been added to our student information. So now we also have Mercy in our classroom because she just got integrated into the class, okay? Now, the beauty of this tool itself is that we can go ahead and use it for classroom management only, or we can use it as a different tool. But for classroom management, this works wonders you have a timer that you can go ahead and project in, um, in the screen itself. And you'll see the timer. Let's see. I think you can go ahead and see the timer. Yeah, okay. You can project it in two ways. On the screen itself with the little, um, with the little monsters, okay? Or you can project it in a different way, just give it 15 seconds. And once the 15 seconds are uh, done, they will hear a sound, okay? I think I, you're not gonna hear the sound right now because I didn't um, check on some little buttons that I had to check, but I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna stop projecting and I'm gonna project again so that way you can see it. I think I, did you hear the sound? I think you did. You can exit, time's up, and students go back to what they have to do, okay? Also, in the toolkit, you can go ahead and create groups, and this can help you for your breakout rooms if you guys use um, Zoom. If you use Zoom, the breakout rooms, you can go ahead and use this tool to create groups, right? And okay, these are the ones that I'm going to put in the breakout rooms and that's how it's going to be. Okay, so there, it helps you manage this as well. And this is a very interesting tool. Another thing that you can use is the assistance. So, or attendance sheet. So for example, you want to give students roles and purposes, you can go ahead and assign a student to take the attendance for you. Uh, although you're the one that's going to manage the platform, you can go ahead and say, for example, Mario, okay, Mario, it's your turn today to check and see that everybody is logged in, that everybody has their cameras on. And Mario tells you, oh, teacher, you know what? Uh, Monica is here, uh, but uh, Carla isn't, isn't here today, uh, or she doesn't have her camera on. She hasn't gotten logged in yet. Uh, let's see. Uh, Maria, Maria is not here yet either teacher. So, okay, so I go ahead and put them in red. I save and if you can see, the ones that are not in the classroom are going to be absent. So they do not have color. Um, this also helps students to check themselves out in a different way. So it's very appealing for them. Oh my God, I'm a monster. I have only one eye. I have two ears. I have, I don't know, I have a lot of... Uh, limbs so they they even ask you teacher can you change my monster i don't like that monster please and you can go ahead and gladly change it um 
Also, if you want to give the opportunity for students to participate, this is a great tool to do this. You can go ahead and project it on your screen at the time that you want participation to happen. And you can go ahead and let them know, you know what, today it's going to be the turn of, and it's Monica's turn. Okay, so Monica, can you please give me the sentence with the simple present? And she did it correctly. Perfect, perfect, Monica. So you're going to have a point. And this is rewarding them, what we were saying before, you're rewarding them, you're giving them props. This is a way to do it. And also here, if you are going to scold them in a nonverbal way, you can go ahead and also um, select, for example, okay, Anna, Claudia, and Monica, I'm so sorry, guys, you're not doing what you're supposed to. You're not paying attention you're playing with something else they hear that sound and immediately their attention goes to the screen and they're like looking who got the point off okay if you want to go ahead and do that with the whole class and this is a way to manage your class as well so is it possible for you to give your students um that reinforcement like saying letting them know guys you're not doing you're not paying attention i need you to focus um, the nonverbal intervention, it is possible if you use Class Dojo. Yes, it is possible. Okay. So I want to hear, I want to hear, I'm, I continue to, to think that you're in the Zoom session with me. Um, I want to look at your comments. Please, please tell me what you think about this tool. Do you think that this is helpful for you? Do you think that you can go ahead and incorporate it into your classes? to make your classes more manageable. What do you think? Great. Perfect. Castojo is based on Skinner theory. Yes, awesome. Yes, Carla, that is true. Okay. It's learning and funny. Yeah, definitely, Lucrecia. Mindfulness videos. Yes, that is something that I didn't show you, but yes, it does have mindfulness videos. And those videos can go ahead and give you the opportunity for them to settle down. Uh, you can use them as warm ups or you can use them as close ups uh, for your lesson. Okay, guys, so you behaved wonderfully today. And so I'm going to go ahead and project a video. Or guys, I want you to, let's, let's, let's see how you are doing. I want to see what you think. How do you feel? You can use these mindfulness videos to check on their status. Because remember that also as we are struggling, kids are also struggling because they cannot go outside. So we have to be very careful and we have to check on them constantly. I think that is very important, okay? Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you some other tools. So we have Zoom, right? And in Zoom, you, I, I think that most of you, I hope that most of you have gone and, and uh, use Zoom. Do you use Zoom platforms or do you use different platforms? Because I'm going to talk to you about these two, Zoom and Google, so that you can go ahead and use these tools in. Yes, of course, I can, Ana Lucia. I'm gonna go ahead and share the links with, uh, with um, Eduardo in a bit, so you can have them. And definitely, and I'm gonna share the presentation if you want as well, so you can have them there. Okay. Yes, tools, new tools, definitely. And I think you're gonna enjoy these tools. Um, so Zoom is a very, useful tool. As you can see, we I have been projecting my screen, but you also have the opportunity to make breakout rooms, okay? And these breakout rooms lead to having your students participate more in class. And as groups, if you want them to be separated, you can set the time limit, for example, five minutes, I think, for them to discuss something. And you could go inside the breakout rooms and listen to them. Um, I'm not going to go into depth with a Zoom right now because I'm sharing my screen and I want to also uh, direct my attention to two very, very 
unique and purposeful um, tools that you can go ahead and integrate if you have Google. So most of you, I think that you guys use, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, do you use Google Meets or do you use um, Zoom or do you use uh, Teams? Do you use these kind of uh, platforms for giving classes? Because these are like the most normal ones that we've been using over the few months that we've been inside our houses, <laughs> all right? So um, if you use Zoom, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this right now. I'm gonna project the screen again because I want to project it. So if you use Zoom, you can go ahead and you can integrate the webcam. You have uh, like things that you can see in the back. You can make annotations, of course, okay? You can put it on pause. You have um, the control over your classes. And you also have uh, the information about, um, well, here you can go ahead and record. Uh, you can make transmissions. You can share videos. There's a lot of things that you can do in Zoom that are very purposeful and that are very interactive for your students. So since you already know a little bit about this tool, I'm gonna go into Jamboard, okay? So I'm going to show you what is Jamboard. Jamboard is a tool that is specifically for Google, but it is already in your Google platform. So there's no need for you to download it. It is already available and you can use it in a very unique way. So I'm gonna share this with you right now, okay? I'm gonna share this link with Eduardo and I'm gonna ask him to put it in the, I'm gonna ask him right now to please put it inside the chat because I want you guys to participate with this for me, okay? So uh, Eduardo, can you please go ahead? I'm gonna share it with you right now. Give me a second. Uh, here we go. Okay, I've already sent the link for him to share it with you. And you're going to go into, if you are in your phone, it's gonna be a little bit different. Maybe the you're not gonna be able to see it, okay? But uh, you're gonna only be able to see it, not interact with it because I'm not sure why in my phone it works, but in some other phones I did make some tests and in some other phones it didn't work. So if you're in a computer, you're going to be able to see it and interact with the, with the Jamboard, okay? So I'm gonna ask you to see, here we go. So this is our Jamboard. Yes, I have a lot of you that are already joining, good. And this is what you're going to do. So if you want a student to answer a question about a certain topic that you're seeing in class, and in this case here, I have two questions. Um, I have two slides, one that indicates how can you make your virtual classroom more uh, pleasant and rewarding? And the second one is what teaching styles and methods can you use to be effective in your online lessons? Um, in this case, I want you guys to Whichever one you wish to do, one or two, please go ahead and comment. How are you going to do this? You see here a little table or um, icon board, okay? And here you're going to see the uh, like a little paper that says sticky notes. So I want you to go ahead and click on the sticky notes, choose a color, and you're going to answer the questions. For the ones that are not able to answer the questions, you're going to start seeing the questions pop up. As soon as you answer the question, please go ahead and save your sticky note. And uh, this is anonymous. So you can go ahead and write your name if you want, or you can tell your students, you know what guys, I need, to, I need for you to write your name with your answer so I can check it. Um, but this is something that you can do within the classroom. So it's very interactive and students have a lot of fun. Um, and the teacher 
evaluates if they are understanding or not over this, something that they have to go over again. So go ahead, please, guys. Um, if you can go ahead and start using the sticky notes, let me know, please. And I'll let you to it. I'm going to give you like a minute or two so you can go ahead and use the sticky notes, okay? Yeah. It, it might say too many people right now, but the ones that are able to get in are the ones that were able to get in, please try to try to do that. And if you do not, um, you're not able to do it there, please write your comments in the chat, please, okay? So I see that there is a kangaroo, there's an alligator, there's a bull, an elephant, and 38 more. Can you please start working on the sticky notes? I think the permission is already done. I do have permission. I think that's because we have so many people joining uh, that probably that's why. But if you are not able to do it, please go ahead and um, just send your, your your answers through the messages, through the chat. And the ones that were able to join, please go ahead and try to make the sticky notes. Ask permission to edit, let's see. Hmm. Well, it doesn't give me any information to rename or move. Are you doing it by the computer or are you trying to do it by your um, phone? Not available in your area. I'm so sorry, Jose. Okay, yeah, you cannot get in, uh, Maida, because probably there's too many people right now. I have 42 people already trying to get in. You can also try to choose the pen if you want to write something down, okay? Um, we can go ahead and use a different color. If you wanna write something down, you can write your name. Try to do that. There's different types of pens. There's markers and there's also other things that you can do. Okay, Gabriela, are you, you're using a computer. Does it give you access to use the sticky notes? Hmm, okay. I'm sorry, guys. It's something probably about the, about my end. I thought it, uh, it was already available because I did try it and it was working. So, um, well, let me just show you how it works. I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the screen so you can see, and that way, and um, in this case, I think it, because your students are going to be using Google, you can go ahead and use this as well. I'm going to leave this one. Um, give me just a second. Okay. So, All right, so here we have the information and I'm gonna show you how to use it. So with the sticky notes, you can choose the color. I'm gonna choose blue and I'm gonna choose one of the answers. Yeah, probably it was too many people. Yeah, it could be possible that there were too many people that uh, were trying to get in and that's why it wasn't working. So hence, you answer the first question. It says, how can you make your virtual classroom more pleasant and rewarding? Um, can you answer through the, through the chat, please? Let's see. I'm gonna write down your answer so that way they know the first one that answers. Let's see. 
Okay, hangman memory. Okay. Memory. Memory, let's see. Scavenger hunt. Okay, so here's one. I'm gonna use another sticky note, pink one, and I'm gonna write, okay, we can make the virtual classes more pleasant by looking, okay, we can, oh, sorry. By looking, okay, for virtual activities, okay. for the typos okay so we can make them and we have another sticky note so if you can see i have my sticky notes here and this at the end with your students it would be filled with the sticky notes that they use and you can go ahead and check them and like i said you can tell them um guys please write down your names because i need to see your answers and i need to see that you're participating and this is probably more functional when you have a group of students that are no more than 30, okay? Um, because probably that's why it wasn't working right now. I'm going to check and see because it did have a, the function of having anyone access the video and the link. So it says no signing required. I do have that available, okay? I'm sorry that you weren't able to use it, but um, try to check it out. It is in your Google. So if you go into, I don't know if you see it right now, I'm gonna share this one. If you go into your Google Drive, okay, here in this part here, where you have the little, the nine little circles, you will see under class, uh, classroom, Google Classroom, you will see Jamboard. It is already integrated into the Google Classroom. So you shouldn't have any problem. You, it's not necessary for you to download it, okay? So this, I think it's, um, it's something that you can use. The other question that I had for you in this Jamboard application was, what teaching styles and methods can you use to be effective in your online lessons? Let's take a minute. Um, I'm going to project it a little bit bigger so that way you can use, you can see it, okay? Um, and I want you to answer the second question, please. So what teaching styles and methods can you use to be effective in your online classroom? From the things that we've already seen, what can you use? What can you go ahead and change to make them more effective? Not a problem, Victor. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell them rules. Very good, Linda. Uh, Lilian, sorry. Tell them rooms, rules, attendance. Okay. Very good. So we have these two new tools, Jamboard. And the last one that I want to share with you, 
I think that you're also going to find very interesting is not, okay? Now, not is going to allow you uh, to go ahead and actually um, give students the tools for them to be able to interact inside the classroom without making so much noise and with having them their um, microphone off, okay? So this here, I'm oh, sorry, not, I'm gonna show you how it works. This one you do need to, it's not a download because it is also for Google, but uh, you do need to look for it. So I'm gonna show you how to look for it, okay? Let me just uh, share my screen right now here. So here we have the following. You go ahead and look for extensions. Extensions Chrome, okay? You need to look for extensions Chrome. And then in extension Chrome, the one that appears at the beginning, when it says that says um, Chrome website stores extensions, Google Chrome, okay? Those are the ones that you're going to look into. You're going to click into that link and then you're going to look for NOD, N-O-D, N-O-D. That's the one that you're going to look into, okay? Once you have it, I already have it installed, okay? So this is for the people that use Google Meets. This is a, uh, something that, it's a tool that is going to be projected in your Google Meets, okay? So here, for example, you have NOD, you add it, it says, it's going to give you the, the same little message that you have here, add to Chrome. Um, you add it and then automatically you would have it inside your Google Meets, okay? So once you have this done, you can go into your Google Meets. Let's go back here. And you make your session. So I'm going to show you how to make the session and what it looks like, okay? So we start the meeting. And I'm going to be projecting myself. That's going to be kind of weird. So you join the meeting. You can go ahead and copy the link. Um, I'm going to share the link with you guys. Check and see if you can go inside if you can. All right. And let me just share it right now in the, here we go. Okay. Check and see if you can go inside the Google Meets account, please. Some of you, not all of you, I'm, I'm giving you the link, but try at least 10 of you, if you can go ahead and do that, please do it. So here, I have my camera off right now uh, because of the purpose that we have this on. And if you are able to go in here, you see, as soon as you add the nod into your Google, um, your Google Chrome account, okay, in extensions, you will have this available. So you see that you have interactions, emojis that students can use. For example, okay, there's a birthday today. So we're going to say happy birthday to, um, to Pedrito. Happy birthday, Pedrito. And everybody's going to click on the happy birthday emoji. So we can say happy birthday to Pedrito. If a student wants to raise their hand, what they're going to do is that they're going to use this icon. And as soon as the icon is available, okay, then um, once the teacher has finished the intervention with the student, the teacher is the one that goes ahead and clicks on the X you need to be very careful here because here in the intervention with the student, the first student that raises the hand is the one that is going to appear at the bottom of the list. The rest are going to appear on top. So once the intervention is done, you click on the X, the person is no longer there and the other ones are going to be showing. So this is something very interesting also where it can go ahead and help you control your classroom. For example, you ask a student, uh, hi guys, okay, so do you understand, did you understand the topic? 
Yes, we did. Okay, so show me a thumbs up if you understood and they're going to show you thumbs ups. Okay, so this is something that you can also do and use for, um, for your Google Meets if you use this application. I think that most of the schools right now they're using Google Meets because it's something that they already have and it's um, similar to uh, Zoom. Okay, so um, I really hope that you enjoyed the session. So with Nod and the Zoom applications, here are a little bit of tools that you can use to make your, your classes a little bit more interactive and rewarding for students. Um, I want uh, you guys to please remember, this is what I'm going to finish with, okay? It, remember that teachers are prepared to change the world. To, teacher, to teach is to touch a life forever. Education is an ornament in the prosperity and refuge in adversity. And teachers affect eternity. No one can tell where their influence stops. So please guys, remember you are the real influencers, not the ones in TikTok. <laughs> you are the ones that are going to transcend in every single way. Just look at the tools that work for you. I gave you some, I hope that they work uh, for you. Give them a try, let me know. Um, I really appreciate being here and sharing a little bit of my knowledge with you. Uh, sharing a little bit of my experience as well, because these are things that have worked for me. Um, so I thank you very much. And I'm leaving the time right now for any questions that you may have. Please um, feel free to do it. Here is my email as well. Okay, I'm sending you my email. Uh, this is my personal email. And this is my work email. If you uh, need the presentation or something, please feel free to ask for it. I uh, gladly will give you this information, okay? Um, which link are you talking about, Lisa? Let me see if I can get it for you. Oh, the link for registration. Yeah, they're gonna give it to you in a little bit, okay? Um, so, uh, if, are you there? Can we yes. go ahead and open it for questions? Yes, thank you so much, Marcel, for such a great conference. And mm -hmm. we do have some questions that we collected, actually. Thank and you. One of the first ones that we collected is, uh, when we're talking about Edmodo. Mm -hmm. um, is it that for free? Yes, there is a free version and there's also a paid version. But the free version has so much to offer that there's no need to pay truthfully. So oh, yes, okay. it is completely free and it is also available for phones. So um, the only thing is that some phones may have a different setting, so they have to be very careful. And some things that you do in Edmodo, for example, quizzes, it's better for students to actually do their quizzes inside a computer instead of a phone because sometimes um, it might get a little like uh, distorted in some way. So it's best for them to do it in, in a computer, but it is uh, available for phones as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have another one regarding class dojo that says from Rosa Archila, how many teachers can participate in a teacher as a teacher in, a, in one course? Oh, well, in, for example, Class Dojo, you can go ahead and make your classes and you can share your classes with uh, another teacher. I think you can share them as many times as you wish. Uh, the only thing is that you have to make sure that you have the correct email address for them to be linked into the Edmodo account. And the teacher has to also have an Edmodo account. Uh, sorry, the um, Class Dojo account. If they don't have a Class Dojo account, then it's not possible to share that information. Okay, we have another one that is coming for when they were talking about the, the Google Meet. Mm -hmm. Anna Karina says, can it be used in Zoom? Uh, which, um, which of the two? Um, 
They just said it can be used. The last one you were talking actually. Oh, uh, okay. So not a uh, not is actually de definitely only for um, for Google, but Zoom does have that information uh, for you. Okay, so um, it does have the the information there, and you, I think it has the little tools. There's a toolbox in Zoom where you can go ahead and add uh, like emojis or little props that you can use for them to, for students to actually raise their hand and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you again for solving those questions and taking the time to share this information with us. Now, this is the attendance time. I've shared some, a link that you can use to log in. You will have 10 minutes to fill out the information and then with the link will no longer be available. And that link is being shared on the live chat and you make sure to fill it in with your information and the one shared in every conference you attend. And this is how we will sum up the hours of you participated for your diplomas. Of course. If this has been all for this conference. And so we invite you to join us for the next ones during the week and two or three and two at 5 p.m. in both of our channels, Idiomas Susax and TTS conferences. And as a reminder, this video will be saved on the channel to watch it later as many times as you want. And have a wonderful afternoon. And Marcel, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for, for joining the session. I hope it helped a little. Um, and uh, I hope that you go ahead and, and take a look at the tools that I showed you, the methods. Um, and remember, you are the teachers that make a difference. Um, and if you ever need any uh, help, please feel free to contact me uh, to my email. I would gladly reply and we can do a Zoom session or something if you ever need help. Okay, so thank you very much. Have a great night and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Eduardo. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Good night.